Hi, I'm Rick Zanotti, and this is episode 16 of Captivating, the Adobe Captivate podcast. When was the last time you went to a library? Probably a while ago. Now, did you know that Captivate has a library? Captivate? A library, you say? That's correct. Captivate has a library which allows you to speed up your production and workflow and also allows you to keep your file sizes smaller when you publish. Let's take a look at what the library does. All right, here we are in the Captivate project and you don't see the library anywhere on your main storyboard view screen. What you have to do is go into slide view or edit view. Now in edit view, you'll notice again, there's no library anywhere visible. We turn on the library by going to window and then library. That opens up the library for the piece. I can close it as well just simply by clicking on window and library again. Now the other thing I can do is say control alt L and that brings up the library as well. So those are the two ways you would open the library. Now if you notice the library is in essence a media manager. It keeps track of all the assets and media used by your Captivate project. Now it also organizes things into audio, backgrounds, images, media, which would be your flash animations, and presentations. These would be your PowerPoint presentations that you've imported. If I double click on any of these folders, it shows me all of the media files or audio files in this actual piece. I, I can right click on one of the files. I can say play. I'm Nancy Jones, your guide on this journey into the world of ethics, the world of doing the right thing. So you can play any of the audios, by, you can preview it, it shows you a waveform of what the audio looks like. I can rename a file, I can delete it from the library, which also takes it out of your piece. I can import a file into the library. I can also export to another folder. And I can edit with, for example, Adobe Sound Booth CS4. I can also have any other sound editor, Adobe Auditions. I can have Sony SoundForge, whatever I want here. If I click Edit there, this will launch Sound Booth. And it will bring our wave into a Sound Booth for editing. Now, here we can actually edit the, the, uh, the wave file. When we save it, those changes will be reflected back into our piece. So it automatically makes those changes for us. It's going back to here. I, here's where I could choose the edit program I want to use. Uh, and this will always default to the last one you opened here. I can also edit with Adobe Captivate, which in this case would do the following. It would bring up the Adobe Sound Editor. Close that out. I can duplicate that file if I want to use it somewhere else. I can move it to a new folder. I can look at the properties of the actual file. If I click on that, you'll see that it tells us it's a sound file. I can update the file. That means I can import, I click enter, and I can import from another file, bring it into this one, it will replace it and update all of the instances that this file was used in our project. That's a real powerful feature. Usage shows me everywhere in the piece that it's used, and in this case, it's only in used uh, in one spot. And finally, I can select the unused items in the piece, and that allows me to delete them later on if you don't want to keep them uh, taking up room in your library. Now, your library can be a lot bigger than your actual piece. What's in the library does not get published if it's not used in the final uh, flash that's outputted from Captivate. If I go into backgrounds, this will show the backgrounds that I'm actually using in this particular project. Now I can make it bigger so you could see it. So here you go. These are the backgrounds that are, in essence, the, the slide backgrounds for all of the pieces, for all of the uh, different slides. Let me close that out. If we go to images, these are images that we're using in the piece. And they look like they're just things to 
create a bit of a mask. Media, these would be animations. And if I want to see what that looks like, I can hit play. And you notice the door open right there. So that's a little flash movie. I can look at this one. Now we're inside the elevator going up. You can see the little flash animation there. And the door opens up. And finally, if we had one, you would see the PowerPoint presentation there. Now the other thing you can do with the library is also drag objects out of the library. So for example, if I want to put an audio file, I could grab it and drag it into the library, into the piece this way, from the library. Now, let's say I have this audio file and I want to use it 20 times. Will that take up 20 times the space in my Captivate piece? No. Every time you drag it out to use in a particular slide, it will only take up one instance or one iteration of this particular file. So Captivate actually takes good advantage of your media and assets and doesn't duplicate them and creates smaller file sizes as a result. The last thing we can do with this is we can also open another library. So let's say I want to open another Captivate library. In this case, I'll open the Islands Captivate file. Now this creates a second open library. So we have our first one, which is the one we were doing before. And now we have our second library. This is one that we've used in one of the other podcasts. So this allows us to take content from another Captivate piece and drag it into our current existing piece. This is very powerful. This allows us to have multiple Captivate libraries open, which allows the reuse of content. What I would use this for is to create a piece where let's say you create a Captivate piece which has all of your logos, your branding, your colors, your background slides, everything the way you want for all of your training. You could open that specific Captivate file or library and then drag those objects into your current project. It's a really nice simple way to create a reusable library that anyone can use, especially if you have more than one developer. And that pretty much sums up all of the features of the Adobe Captivate library. There you have it, your trip to the Captivate library. For Captivating, I'm Rick Zanotti. See you next time, and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast.